Uh, I'm Book Slovakia, and for the first time in a long time, I'm recording a video. And today's video is going to be kind of silly because I have but one goal make it to the store and back alive. You see, we're playing My Summer Car, a roguelike car tuning simulator in which you are a person. Uh, apparently a man in Finland in the 70s or 80s and you're putting together a car and that's about it. You have different jobs you can do to make money and so forth uh, but the real issue is that I can't drive in this game apparently. Uh, I have tried three or four times to get to the store and back without dying because you have to have food, uh, something to drink and so on. And these things are apparently a deadly chore to try to acquire in Finland. So I'm going to start a new game because I'm pretty sure that my last vehicle was wrecked in a ditch somewhere. And we're just going to try to get to the store and back. If I manage that feat, uh, then we will also put together an engine. And beyond that, mm, we'll see. So let's begin. We'll just go Slovakia and book it. Book it Slovakia. I'm going to turn off permanent death. Um, you really don't have to, uh, but I do, even though it doesn't matter, because I basically quit every time I die, because when you respawn, you respawn at your house, which seems like a good thing, except for that the game is all very uh, realistic. So when you respawn at your house, you're basically... A uh, 10 minute walk from wherever it is you died, assuming that you're only 10 minutes away from where you died. At a walking pace. And I do mean a walking pace. So, as you can see here, I spawn in my kitchen. And one of the tips I've seen online is to go ahead and turn on all your lights because at night, and I can confirm this, it gets very dark. You save the game by looking in the toilet. And I'm thinking for some amount of time, you're going to start with a uh, Christmas present. I don't know how long that's going to be, but I will say that whatever alcohol is present in that present makes you incredibly drunk, so I don't even mess with it. I will actually go to the store first because they only start you with one case of beer and one package of sausages, and this is not sustainable for a long-term project such as putting together a vehicle, uh, specifically an engine, from scratch. Uh, I will go ahead and note that I don't know anything about cars. Um, I often tell my wife that I think that her relatives, uh, rather her extended family, would probably find this game hilarious to watch me play, because I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Um, I have heard of some of these car parts before, and that's really the extent of my vehicular knowledge. So here we are pulling onto the road. You do have to manually shift, though in this version, I have it set to the nice kind of uh, shifting, which is I just tell it what gear I want it to be in, and it shifts it to that gear for me. Uh, you can play this with an active clutch, meaning that you have to learn how to drive a manual style transmission basically from your keyboard. Uh, having driven a manual in my well, real life, in my career as an old person, um, doing it from a keyboard does not seem like a lot of fun. I am going to shift up into second gear now to get a little bit more speed. Uh, however, and as you can see, I just went off the road. Uh, the roads in Finland are apparently incredibly dangerous and high up off the road. Uh, several times I have wrecked and died because I've been going too fast. If you get your vehicle up into fourth gear, your highest gear available, you are uh, your frame or your tires is not able to sustain that speed, and in fact you rock until you crash and die. Uh, so I'm going to try to avoid that. I'm not going to go any higher than second gear on this back road because uh, it and I have a history. It is a long and storied past of me crashing into things or off the road and into swamps lakes, trees, ditches, and so forth. So I'm just going to try to get to the store in a reasonable amount of time without dying. 
I know it's been a long time since I've talked to you, YouTube, and I apologize for my incredibly long absence. Um, my wife, two years ago for Christmas, bought me my recording equipment that you see me on today. And I have not been making use of it because at the same time, I also got a job teaching. And we do not want to be in third gear. And I can't really see if there's oncoming traffic, but hey, let's do it anyway. So she got me my recording equipment, a nice snowball microphone, and a uh, Logitech HD webcam that you see this lovely mug on before you. I have in fact shaved today, uh, but I left some scruff in because I feel like my cheek was biting too deeply into my facial hair, and I wanted to have a better looking uh, beard, a more full beard, if you will. Something a bit more even across the top rather than dipped. A dipped beard that probably wouldn't taste very good, like a chocolate dipped cheese dipped beard. Although I have experienced both those things, having had my beard get caught in what I was eating at the time. So anyway, I uh, became a teacher, teach fourth grade at a small school in Georgia. It's actually not very small at all. And uh, <laughs> there you go. It's a uh, challenging work. I'm on Christmas break right now. My friends who know better have uh, often remarked that they wish that they got two weeks off at Christmas, to which I replied that I work 10-hour days just about every day, including uh, the occasional 12-hour day from getting to work early and staying late, sometimes a faculty meeting, sometimes to get prepared for the next day. And uh, if they would like to have uh, Chris two weeks off at Christmas, they can be trapped in a room with 30 of their closest co-workers uh, without a break. So. Don't get me wrong, I do enjoy teaching. I think fourth graders are you know, wonderful kids. They're fun to be around. Uh, they're so smart. They're smarter than anyone gives them any credit for. I'm about to die because I'm talking instead of driving. They're smarter than anyone gives them credit for. Uh, very savvy, especially I, I teach in a low income school. And so these kids are very street wise. Uh, more so than you would expect from nine and 10 year olds. If you ever want to lose faith in humanity, uh, <laughs> depending on how you view the uh, election results, you could also talk to a cynical 10-year-old, and that'll do it pretty good. Or pretty well, depending on how you want to, you know, grammar it up today. I should be mindful of my grammar, but eh, none of y'all care. And I'm in Georgia, so it's not like the English language is all that important here. As you can see, apparently in Finland, there are deep ditches on either side of your back roads. Uh, I grew up in rural West Tennessee, where um, eh, this kind of scenery is not uncommon. It's less boggy and wet. Um, it's very much like tobacco and cotton, not cotton, but soybeans. I'm going to try to not die or wreck irreversibly. Uh, apparently, if you wreck, you can also, when you respawn, you can go get your tractor and tow yourself out of the ditch or out of the lake or fog, whatever it is you end up in. Um, but apparently, the diesel engine mechanics are realistic, which means that you have to do something special, uh, which I think you pre-warm the engine. But again, not being a car guy, not 100% on that. So anyway, I uh, grew up in West Tennessee, rural West Tennessee, and uh, the roads, eh, again, not quite so, I mean, this almost looks exotic to me with these tall grasses and, oh, hey, okay, you're okay, okay, we're okay, we're okay, we're okay, we're okay. Um, not unlike this with farms and farm buildings, um, but the roads tend to not have these incredible steep drop-offs suddenly into lakes and bogs. Not a lot of lakes and bogs in West Tennessee, unless you talk about the land between the lakes. That's Real Foot Lake, created when there was a massive earthquake in the region uh, centuries ago. I don't know the exact time, just uh, West Tennessee history. Woo. Oh, shit. Okay, okay, okay. We're okay. We're okay. We're, we're not okay. We rolled over. We're okay. No, we're not okay. We're okay. Are we okay? No, we're still not. We're okay. We're not okay. We're okay. We're not okay. We're okay. Not okay. Uh, we're okay! Oh my god! Oh my god! Okay, uh, let's go ahead and tail shift the first gear. Uh, try to get back on 
some road. I uh, cannot believe that we're not dead. I'm going to be honest. Um, just up to second. Um, earlier, there were a bunch of cops all over the place. I can't really see how fast I'm going so well, so I'm going to try to keep it reasonable. I did ditch them, but my assumption is that the driving mechanics are such that uh, the cops themselves were also killed in the pursuit since they probably went over 10 kilometers an hour and died. But here we are on a somewhat major road. Uh, I haven't seen any wildlife, but I would not be surprised to see a deer leap out in front of my van and kill us all. A uh, common sight in West Tennessee. Of course, I don't live there anymore. Uh, still common here in North Georgia, uh, especially because we live near uh, Chickamauga Battlefield. So there are a bunch of tall cow rats in the area. Cow rats might be something you call deer, uh, depending on how you feel about them. But we're just going to tool along until I see the exit for the store, which I believe is here. No cops this time, so apparently it's not a holiday anymore. Here in Georgia, whenever there's any kind of holiday, the cops are out in force looking for drunk drivers. As well, they should. Drunk driving is a great crime against humanity, if you ask me. I forgot to get gas. Oh, well. We've made it to the store. Now, I don't know what time it is, so there may be a break here. Uh, I'm going to get out of my car. There may be a break here as I... Uh, Oh, the store is open. Last time I made it to the store without dying, I got um, the store was closed, and so I had to keep saving, which apparently advances the time a little bit. I had to keep saving until it was time for the store to reopen, which was a huge pain in the ass. I don't like that. We're going to buy up all the food here. Uh, frozen pizzas, boxes of macaroni, and of course sausages. Um, we're going to buy some juice. We bought all, oh, oh, can't forget this. Uh, this is a fan belt. We need this to complete our vehicle, which, uh, $2,400. Uh, expensive day. Uh, I would like to purchase, there we go. You have to be careful here. Uh, left click picks up or interacts with objects. And F activates objects. So if you're not careful, you will activate your shopping bag here. And all of the stuff that you just purchased will come flying out. So, we are 50% into the way of the game I want to play with you all. I apologize for that. I hope nobody gets motion sick. And I may even make it back to my house without dying. Let's find out. Okay, get that door closed. There's downshift to first gear. And by that I mean shift up to four somehow. Alright. Uh, I apologize for that fly noise. It's a sound effect in the game that is all too frequent in my opinion. Um, I don't know how active the devs are in forum posts and whatnot, so I will be making a forum post about the damn fly thing, because that is just annoying. I don't know if there are like a lot of flies or mosquitoes here in Finland. Uh, having never been myself, I believe my, I say my sister's been. I think they went to Norway if they're having me. Um, I don't know if that's a, a common problem, and it's just part of the experience of the life simulator. Or if, uh, it's a bug, wah wah, that's just very, very annoying. So, we're gonna head back to the house now. Hopefully, we won't die in the process. I like that cloud effect there, where it's dark ahead, or that's just the game loading, who knows. Ooh, I'm gonna put it in fourth. Maybe a bad idea. In fact, I know it is. I'm gonna jump to it. Um, so we're gonna head back to the house. And if we actually make it without dying, uh, we're gonna dump all of our stuff in the kitchen, and I'll take the fan belt with me to build the engine. And that will be episode two, is the engine build. Alright, so far so good. Slow down a bit. Check for traffic. You know it's a good life simulator when you actually look for traffic. So again, this is my summer car. I believe it's uh, early access. And again, you're building a vehicle. 
you're building a vehicle over the course, I guess, of a summer here in Finland. And it's a quote-unquote roguelike because it has permanent dash. Um, apparently there's a fairly deep vehicle tuning system that's been implemented. Um, not being a car guy, I don't know anything about that other than apparently you can tweak some stuff on your, uh, on your rocker, uh, cylinder head. I don't know what those things are. I don't know what they do. I mean, you can guess, but you'll probably laugh at me. Um, so you can tweak that. You can apparently tweak your carburetor, perhaps. And uh, we'll see if that ever happens. Uh, again, I'm not really a car guy, so we'll see. I'm getting a weird noise from my car that I'm not familiar with, so there's that. And uh, yeah, so if we actually make it back to the house without dying, which again will be an incredible feat, uh, this is like my fourth or fifth try, and I have not been filming all these tries. Otherwise, that could probably be a series in and of itself. To the store in my summer car. There's a ditch. I've died in that ditch before. I feel like I'm being shot at by a very small machine gun. I hope that's not the case. Maybe this takes place during the Winter War. Even though it's my summer car. I don't think so. So just tooling around on this back road. Hopefully no oncoming traffic sees fit to kill us. If that happens, I'll be very upset. But you know, what do you do? He uh, has permadeath. Um, which? Oh, no! No! Oh, no! Oh, shit! 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 I don't think that was my turn. It's too soon. Um. The vehicle does not control well, I'm guessing because it's an old, shitty 70s Finnish van? I don't know. Uh, but it doesn't control super well. They have, um, in the options, uh, steering controls, like a, like a, an actual steering wheel peripheral. Uh, I do not own one of those because I don't play a lot of racing games, so I've thought about it for farming simulators since tractors use steering wheels and harvesters for one. Um, eh, maybe one day. Right now, I'm thinking about uh, an Oculus Rift. Uh, not that I have the money for that, uh, but my very good friend Casey, also known as the Combo Dropper, you should check out his videos on YouTube. He is uh, starting to stream again soon, I think is his intention, probably in the next month or two. Uh, but he does have a pretty good catalog of stuff. Uh, Killer Instinct, um, some Darkest Dungeon, a few other things. Uh, and they're very fun to watch. He's got a great uh, personality there. So yeah, check him out on uh, the Combo Dropper on YouTube. I love watching him. Um, but he received an Oculus gift for Oculus gift. He received an Oculus gift! Uh, an Oculus gift for Christmas. And uh, I was lucky enough, and, and uh, he was kind enough to invite me over during the break and come play it and see what it was like, and life-changing. Uh, my friend, Casey, said it was like when he uh, first played Mario 64 and experienced a 3D game for the first time. I likened it to watching Jurassic Park as a child when it came out. Uh, that kind of sense of wonder and amazement. Uh, because the dinosaurs are real, you know. Um, you may, uh, if you're younger, I'm 30-ish, 31. Um, oh my god, we might actually make it back to the house. Um, if you're not familiar with that, uh, having seen other Jurassic Parks, you know, two, three, five thousand world and so on, you know, dinosaurs look like crap in a lot of that. In Jurassic Park, when it first came out, those dinosaurs looked real to us. And they still do. They still look amazing, even all these years later, if you ask me. And, uh, especially, like, when Grant and the lady, whose name I never remember, uh, show up in the park for the first time, and they see the brachiosauruses off in the distance, and, and you can just tell that they're overcome with emotion to see what they have been studying their whole lives in person. And, to me, the Oculus Rift 
really created that sensation of wonder and amazement. Uh, and there's, as Casey said, there's really no way to explain it to someone who hasn't uh, experienced it themselves. Uh, I've come up with a couple of ideas myself, saying that it's like being inside a game, or it's similar to lucid dreaming. Um, sometimes like watching someone play, it's like watching someone play charades, so you can see what's inside their head which was kind of a neat experience. Uh, we played Fruit Ninja, and in the Oculus Rift version, uh, in the Touch, the Touch controllers, you actually wield a pair of katanas to cut the fruit, and that was a heck of a lot of fun. I played uh, also Super Hot, which I'd never played before, though I had heard about, uh, but playing it on the Oculus Rift with the Touch was something else that was pretty special. So a big shout out again to my friend Casey, and uh, our mutual friend, uh, Tara for hosting me for the day while we came over and I played entirely too much Oculus Rift. And folks, we have done what I literally thought might be impossible for me. We have made it to the house with supplies for, from the store. I literally did not expect this to happen. I have died numerous times just trying to make this trip. So here we are. I'm going to turn off my car. I'm going to get out. I should probably turn off the lights. Apparently you can do things like forget to tighten down the bolts and leave the lights on. I'm sure we kill the battery and other nifty features. So uh, again, I'm Book of Slovakia. Thank you for joining me for the first episode of My Summer Car in which we drove to the store and back. And that really was an incredible feat, so thank you for being with me on that, because so far, that has proved incredibly fatal. Have a pleasant evening, and I'll see you in the next episode in which we build an engine. Good evening, everyone.